Hello all my dear students I welcome you all to Chakru Academy just a minute series where every minute of your time will help you enhance your conceptual knowledge of the subject and your board exam score so our today's topic is moving coil galvanometer it's a very important topic for your board exam through this topic they ask you conceptual as well as numerical both so i will make sure that once you go through this lecture you will have no doubts left in this topic so first of all let's understand that what is a moving coil galvanometer a moving coil galvanometer is a device which is used to detect small electric currents it can be small to smallest amount of electric currents in that galvanometer you will see that there is a needle which basically rotates in such a way that when you increase the amount of current the deflection in the needle will be also increasing if you decrease the current the deflection in the needle will also decrease it means the deflection in the needle is directly proportional to the amount of current passing through the galvanometer now the second question what they asked here is that what is the principle of the moving coil galvanometer so the principle is the moment there is a current carrying coil placed in a strong magnetic field it experiences a torque and that torque is basically responsible for moving the point according to the amount of current flowing through the galvanometer so let's understand about the construction of the galvanometer that what are the components required for forming a moving coil galvanometer so as all of you can see here there are two figures on the screen so the first one is basically the top view of the moving coil galvanometer and the second one is basically the front view of the galvanometer so here you can see that there is a soft iron core placed between north and south poles so we have a strong magnet and inside that strong magnetic field we have a soft iron core now the first question is that why soft iron core material is required a soft iron core has basically high magnetic permeability due to high magnetic permeability what will happen it will basically enhance the strength of the magnetic field if the strength of the magnetic field is increased automatically the sensitivity of the galvanometer or you can say the torque produced will also increase now after that the second question what they can ask you that why the shape of this north and south pole is basically concave it's a very important concept that why the magnetic poles are concave in shape because due to the concave shape of north and south pole the magnetic field produced will be radial radial in the sense the magnetic field will be along the radius vector of this coil what is the advantage of that let's understand that since we know torque is equal to m cross b which is basically mb sin theta where m is basically the magnetic moment b is the magnetic field and then angle between m and b is theta so m can be also written as n i a n is the number of turns i is the current a is the area of the loop so if the magnetic field lines are radial it means magnetic field lines are in the same plane so what will be the angle between the magnetic field and magnetic moment 90 degree so let's understand that thing if you see that this is the top view this is a soft iron cylinder and you are seeing it from the top you can see the circular face if the magnetic fields are along the radius means the magnetic field lines are in the plane of this so magnetic field lines are in the plane and area vector is always perpendicular to the area correct and the direction of magnetic moment and area vector is exactly same so the angle between the magnetic moment and magnetic field lines in this case will be 90 degree if angle is 90 degree it means sin theta is maximum so torque produced will be maximum so the answer is if the magnetic poles are concave in shape you will get radial magnetic field and the angle between the magnetic moment and magnetic field will be 90 degree hence the torque produced will be maximum correct now the next thing if you see over this soft iron core we have basically a coil there is basically a coil which is worn over this right or which is wrapped over the soft iron core what is the advantage of that if you increase the number of turns of the coil over the soft iron core n is increasing once n is increasing torque is increasing it means the sensitivity of the galvanometer will be very very high correct now the next thing is if you see the front view you can see the soft iron core it is basically connected to a hair spring hair spring in the sense very thin spring so when this pointer will rotate 
according to the amount of current which is passing through the galvanometer, this hairspring will develop what? A restoring torque, which will have a tendency to bring the pointer again to its original position. So there will be two torques. First torque in this current carrying coil, which will move the pointer. And there will be a restoring torque developed in this spring, which will try to bring this pointer again back to its original position. And in equilibrium, both the torques will be equal to each other. So let's understand in the next slide how both the torques will balance each other. And we will prove that the deflection in the galvanometer is basically directly proportional to the amount of current flowing through it. Okay, students, if you see on the screen, it is clearly written that the restoring torque is directly proportional to the deflection in the galvanometer. So who is producing the restoring torque? The hairspring. So the restoring torque is directly proportional to the deflection, which is basically represented by angle alpha. When you remove this proportionality sign, one constant will come into picture, which is called torsion constant of the hairspring, which is denoted by K. So restoring torque will be equal to K times of alpha. Now in equilibrium, this restoring torque should be equal to the torque which is produced in the current carrying coil placed in a strong magnetic field. So, K alpha, which is basically your restoring torque, is equal to deflecting torque. We discussed this formula already, M cross B, where M is NIA multiplied by B, and angle because of the radial field will be 90 degrees. So, that torque is maximum. The moment you equate both, what will be alpha equal to NBA by K? times the current flowing through the galvanometer. So here, this NBA by K is a constant. Number of turns, magnetic field, area of cross-section, and torsion constant. So if you see here, finally, we have proved that the deflection in the galvanometer is directly proportional to the current flowing through the galvanometer. So higher the current, higher will be the deflection. Now, one more thing you can focus here. Since alpha, that is a deflection, is directly proportional to number of turns. The moment you increase the number of turns, deflection will increase. The moment you increase the strength of magnetic field, deflection will increase. The moment you increase the area of cross section of the coil, the deflection will increase. And it is inversely proportional to the torsion constant. So they can ask you a very simple question that what are the factors through which you can change the sensitivity of a galvanometer? So if the galvanometer is very sensitive, it means what? That it can detect smaller to smallest amount of current. That is the meaning of very, very sensitive galvanometer. So let's move to the next slide and we will discuss all the factors on which the sensitivity of the moving coil galvanometer depends. Okay, students, now let's discuss what is the meaning of sensitivity of a galvanometer. Sensitivity of a galvanometer means a galvanometer shows a large deflection even for a small amount of current or a small potential difference applied across it. In sensitivity, we have two types of sensitivity, current and voltage. Let's understand both of them one by one. In current sensitivity, it is defined as the deflection in the galvanometer divided by the current which is flowing through it. Alpha by I is equal to what? NBA by K. We have discussed this in the last topic also. Alpha by I equals to NBA by K. So let's assume that if the current flowing through the galvanometer is 1 amp, then what will happen? The denominator becomes 1. So we can say that the sensitivity, the current sensitivity is exactly same as the deflection in the galvanometer. Correct? That's how you can define it. You don't have to remember any formula. Deflection divided by current. The moment current is 1, the deflection and current sensitivity is exactly same. Similarly, we can define voltage sensitivity. In voltage sensitivity, you have to just do a small change. Instead of I, you will replace that by V, the potential difference across the galvanometer. By Ohm's law, you know that V is equal to higher. Alpha by I, you already know, is NBA by K. You can substitute. This is your voltage sensitivity. If you notice on the board carefully, this NBA by K is nothing, is basically current sensitivity. The so voltage sensitivity is basically current sensitivity divided by resistance. Now, let's discuss what are the factors affecting the sensitivity of a galvanometer. As you know that the number of turns you increase, the sensitivity of the galvanometer should increase. If you increase the strength of the magnetic field, then also what will happen? The sensitivity of the galvanometer will increase. If you see the area of the coil, the moment you increase the area of the coil over the soft iron core, if you increase that, then also current sensitivity will increase. But the sensitivity is inversely proportional to K, the torsion constant. So these are the factors. By changing these factors, you can increase or decrease the sensitivity. So by using the first three factors, because 
the deflection in the galvanometer are directly proportional to the first one, second one, third factor. You can increase the sensitivity by using the last factor because it is inversely proportional to alpha. You can decrease the sensitivity of the galvanometer. Okay, students, now let's discuss the most important concept of moving coil galvanometer from which a lot of numericals are asked in your board exam. Topic name is conversion of a galvanometer into an ammeter or voltmeter. As you know, ammeter has very small resistance. So, for reducing the resistance of the existing galvanometer, we will connect a very small resistance in parallel with the existing galvanometer. So, this resistance is called shunt resistance. A very small resistor connected in parallel with the galvanometer so that the net resistance of the circuit comes down. So, what do we do? We have connected a small resistance in parallel with galvanometer. Now, if you see the circuit, total current coming to the circuit is I. The current which is going into the galvanometer is Ig. And the remaining current which is going into the shunt resistance is I minus Ig. Then, if you observe one more thing, shunt resistance and this are connected in parallel. The potential difference across the galvanometer and shunt resistance should be equal because they are connected in parallel. So what you can write down, the potential difference across shunt resistance should be equal to potential difference across AB. AB is the terminal of the galvanometer. So, what is the formula for potential difference? V equal to IR. So, current in the shunt is I minus IG into S is equal to IG into G. Right? Now, they may ask you to find shunt resistance or they may ask you what is the current which is flowing through the galvanometer. If they ask you to find shunt resistance, you can directly shift the terms. So, this becomes IG divided by I minus IG into resistance of the galvanometer. G stands for resistance of the galvanometer. Or if they ask you to find IG, what you can do? You can open the bracket. So, this becomes I into S minus IG into S equal to IG into capital G. So, you can rearrange the term. I into S equal to IG into S plus G. So, the current in the galvanometer should be equal to I divided by S plus G into S. So, they can either ask you what is the current passing through the galvanometer or the shunt resistance which you are connecting in parallel to convert galvanometer into ammeter. These are the two numericals they can ask you. So, what are the terms? Let us understand what is IG? Ig is the current with which galvanometer gives you the full scale deflection. Full scale deflection. That is the meaning of Ig. 0 to I is the required current range. S is the shunt resistance. I minus Ig is the current which is passing through the shunt. Correct? Now, if they ask you what is the total resistance of the circuit, total resistance will be how much? These two are connected in parallel. So, it will be R1, R2 divided by R1 plus R2, which is G into S divided by G plus S. So, this is the simple working of conversion of galvanometer into Ammeter. Now, students, let us discuss the last topic that is conversion of galvanometer into voltmeter. Since you know that the resistance of the voltmeter is very, very high. So, how will you convert galvanometer into voltmeter? By connecting a very high resistor in series. Very high resistor in series so that the net resistance of the circuit increases because voltmeter has very high resistance. Now, G is the resistance of the galvanometer, R is the resistance which you have connected to a very high resistor. Numerical in this. This is a simple conversion. This is a simple conversion. High resistor connected in series with the galvanometer. How to solve numericals here? As you can see, the potential difference across this voltmeter is V. Potential difference across the voltmeter is V. What is the basic formula of potential difference by using Ohm's law? Total current into total resistance. So what is the current passing through this? Ig. And what is the net resistance of the circuit? R plus G. So, this is the simple equation you need to keep in mind. And how did I write that equation? By using basic Ohm's law. Current multiplied by total resistance. You don't have to remember anything other than that. That's it. The moment you know this, whatever they are asking, whether they are asking the potential difference, whether they are asking IG, whether they are asking what resistor you have connected in series with the galvanometer, you can easily find out. You don't have to remember any other formula. Focus more on the basics rather than mugging up more and more formulas. Funda is simple. You know how to approach the numericals. It's more than enough. Achha. So this was the last topic. 
but how to convert galvanometer into ammeter and voltmeter so we will meet in the next session do share it with your friends and classmates they may also need it see you guys in the next session take care